All right, Robin, thanks for agreeing to uh, come into our office and sit down with me for a couple minutes. You're welcome, Scott. Uh, would you do me a favor and just introduce uh, yourself to the folks in the audience and why you're here? Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Robin Jock, and uh, I moved to New Westminster in 1995 because I knew it was the hub of the city. I could get to my jobs in New West. I could get to jobs in Vancouver. I could work out in Langley. It really was a very central place. Yeah. And I, I've loved living here for 20 years. I, I got in trouble, so I became a member of ACORN because I felt that they were headed towards something that needed be needed in this city. I... Uh, and, and, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, first, uh, would you mind, when we were having a conversation outside, you were telling me about your time at Home, Heart, Home Hardware. Oh, yeah. Would, um, would you explain to, uh, to the folks uh, your situation there and how that ties into our rent bank uh, issue that we're talking about today? Yeah. Well, I got the job after I moved to New West. A couple years later, I got a job with Home Hardware. And I, it was out in Langley. The, well, my original job was downtown Vancouver. That's why I say I loved where I lived in New West because I could get downtown Vancouver. The company down there bought me a bus pass, kept me coming to work. But uh, I, with after 18 years, in the beginning, they always kept you above the minimum wage. But by 1997, by 2005, I'm at $12 an hour. It's... It's above minimum wage, but I always knew that I was just barely making ends meet. Right. Uh, when bills would come, I'd rob Peter to pay Paul so that I could, you know, the rent was the most important, the hydro was the next important, and then food, which suddenly became not near as important as other things. And I always felt that at that point, if there was a bank or something that could help me in an emergency scenario, I mean, when the hydros do, no bank looks at you. It's not like they're going to offer you some money to help you with those types of things. Even though I knew I could pay every two weeks. I had a good job. I was a steady employee. They knew I never missed work. But that was because I was making so little money. I had to be there every day. I put on the happy face. Everybody thought, oh, Robin's doing good. Even though I was living in the poverty line, right. I, I held my head up and I went and worked for that home hardware company. I mean, they're Canadian. Although <laughs> it was, it was tough. Yeah, and you, and you were saying that the big banks wouldn't want to give out small loans to help people cover. No, right. That, that's where when I was told about this, the rental banks. I didn't know there was a Vancouver rental bank and a Surrey rental bank. We we don't have it here in the West. I don't know why they pick on us, but it seemed like it would have been such a good idea at that point in my life because right. those were tough times too. When when you're working. 40 hours a week, and you're still being paid poverty wages, it is very hard to make ends meet. Right. I, I, it would have been a, a godsend if there had been a bank at that point to help just those type of scenarios. I'm not looking for anything else. It was just those life scenarios. That, like those emergencies that pop yeah, up. Yeah, emergencies. Right? That, yeah. And did you ever go to a rent bank to uh, try to cover those emergencies? Uh, I'm sorry, did you ever go to a rent bank, uh, sorry, not a rent bank, thank you, uh, a payday lender to cover those emergencies? I knew that that was an option in there. And I had thought about it. I, one night I, I even stood in front of the place contemplating whether it was a good idea, and I did not go in. I, I felt that, no, I get, you know, I run on a low wage anyway. I don't really, have, especially if I'm going to be paying more than I really should be paying. And so, no, I never did use... Um, any of the money lenders. Well, that's good because they're they're trouble. Yeah. Um, and then, like you were, you alluded to uh, an issue recently that kind of caused you a lot of stress that originally brought you into our office. Would you mind just kind of explaining what's been causing you stress lately? Right. Okay. Well, after being laid off from the home hardware company, I was then on the EI, and then the EI was coming to an end. I was my landlady is, is always. I've been there twenty years, so she's. Two five managers. She's the last one, but she knew I always held came held my word. My word was good, and so she had given me a job doing cleaning around the building, 
because she knew that I'm making, I went from my home job into EI, which you go from 1600 to 1200 a month. Now you're learning to live on lower wages. And the job has kind of helped you cover that little bit that you're, that gap, that gap, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. But then something happened with the, with the EI and the job, right? Yeah, I was then, okay, so then the EI, I'm pushed on to welfare because the EI ran out. Now, welfare says, no, you can make $200, which was okay, okay, because I'm making 280 They then would just deduct it, and they would just take the 80 away and give me 200 So, I was getting 810 and my rent was 695 So, by working there, making that 200 which welfare would let me have, everything, I was back to having the rent paid. And nobody was mad at me. But then the CPC scenario came in. They demand that you sign up for CPP. When CPP came, they sent me $343. It then started this ball rolling that the job was ending anyway with the building, the 280. So now I'm getting 343. So I'm thinking, okay, they'll they'll give me the 200 out of the 343. So I should still be able to get my 810 to pay my rent, even though the job has ended in the building and I'm getting the CPP. But unfortunately, as it turns out, that's not the way it worked, right? That was not the way it works. They yeah. take CPP and they claw penny it back. for penny. Yeah. And suddenly, I'm getting 610 again, and that does not pay the $695 rent, which then, at that point, if there was a lender, if somebody had been out there that could help me, I could have talked to them. So when the job ended and the CPP didn't work out the way that we thought it would, um, what happened next? Like, so you ended up being short on the rent and, and what happened? The eviction. Uh, oh, oh, the eviction, no, I guess. The eviction notices came. <laughs> that that was as a, because of that first scenario where they gave me the 610 instead of the 810. I got the eviction notice because the, the landlords n knew that I was going to start. It all happened because they paid on the same day at the end of the month. I had been giving my landlady money every two weeks. When I had to go on the CPP and the welfare, it was all at the end of the month. So that disappointed them. They, weren't, they did not want somebody paying the rent at the end of the month. So they wrote me the original eviction notice trying to tell welfare that they did not want this scenario. He, If he does not pay us within these 10 days... Just right, sorry, a, a crisis grant or, yeah, or, or something like that. Yeah, a crisis grant. And then a second, you're telling a second eviction notice came. Yes, because... Uh, and, and that was ultimately for, like, two... You're buying, like, how much? A couple hundred bucks? $215. Because of the shorting in the 610 check, I then received the second eviction notice, which... How'd you feel at that time? It was very stressful. I had no idea how I was going to get out of the mess. I really don't have any relatives in this country to borrow money from. I'm on my own, and I, I almost was going to jump out the window. I, I was so stressed at how I was going to get through this. I didn't want to let anybody down. I didn't want to you know, have to leave my building that I've been there 20 years. I, I just didn't know where I would go. And you were mentioning to me six ninety five uh, for rent is you're you're not going to find much cheaper than that these days, right? No, that, if, if you got it, then go somewhere else. I've earned that by being there many years and always helping around that building. It, I I six ninety five. When I look at the the building right now, if I moved out of the suite, they charge nine hundred for my suite. Right. And so it it just felt like this is horrible. There, my whole life is falling apart. There, I just did not know what to do. And, and so I can report to everyone that thankfully the situ your situation has been worked out. Uh, you're, you're still behind a little bit, but, but things have been worked out and you're not going to be losing your spot, right? No, I'm not going to be losing my spot. But there's a lot of folks who out there that have landlords that aren't as, um, don't have the relationship, that, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I have been very lucky that my landlady, she actually helped me with welfare. Great. She actually talked with them for a good half an hour explaining that after being in the building 30 years, where's he going to go? We, we care about this guy. Somebody, which, is, which, is, which is great but rare. Uh, great but rare. Yeah. Well, this is my landlady. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> they um, can be mean. But, but for, folks in, uh, for folks in your other folks in your situation, 
Uh, do you think like a rent bank would have been I able to help them out? I think it would really help them out, I, especially because we all get in the, the same pictures with the hydro. The hydro is, right. is an expense that is coming on when you're only receiving 375 for shelter and such. The hydro is not included in, in there really. Right. And so, yeah, no, and, and it, it would have really been helpful many times if there was somebody I could approach for a small loan that is easy to pay back. Great. Well, uh, Robin, thanks so much for like, coming in and sharing your story with everyone because um, it really helps put some context into what we're trying to work on here. So thank you so much. No, for well, you guys taught me about it. I, I didn't even know that there were, people were trying to help us at this lower end of the the chain. I I didn't know there were rent banks. I was I did try to phone the Vancouver Rent Bank and they said no, they can't help me any west. And I phoned the Surrey Rent Bank and they told me no, we don't go across bridges. And so it's like, well, who do I talk to? And they all recommended Acorn. They they thought that you know they're the ones that are trying to push in that direction to help help people. And so that's when I. And I introduced myself to Acorn, and I'm glad I was able to come and help. And we're glad to have you on as a member. Okay. So uh, thanks a lot, Robin. You think you can get something out of that? Is it too long?